Hey everybody, it's me for Girly here, and today we are going to continue our one pound closed loop system demo series from Best Value X with some solvent distillation. After posting pictures of the new one pound closed loop system on Instagram, which definitely go follow me at Frigroli, uh, as well as a picture of the R600 butane I bought from Best Value X, several folks uh, recommended I distill my butane to clean it up. As I mentioned in previous videos in this series playlist, distillation is required to remove the mystery oils, such as machine lubricants, from your solvent before you flood your materials column with it. Since we are running this closed loop system passively, we are already relying on the nature of the solvent to chase the colder temperatures. So really this distillation process is not much different from doing an actual run. The major difference is we will not be using the materials column. But other than that, all of our equipment is basically the same. While I have not done this process before, I have strictly been blasting directly into my smaller 140 gram close pressurized column with cans of butane like Puretane and Newport. However, now that I will be recovering the solvent back into my system, using a new brand, and of course following the guidance of those much farther down this path than I, I will be distilling all of the solvent before it ever enters my recovery tank. You can see here I am assembling the collection chamber of the system, including the splatter platter base, after cleaning the entire thing with isopropyl alcohol. Watch part 2 of this series to see the breakdown and cleaning of the equipment itself. Let's go ahead and speed it up since we've already done this before. As with most of the passive closed loop system process, dry ice is a necessity in recovering your solvent efficiently. I recommend finding one cooler just big enough for your CLS and then another one big enough for your recovery tank. The smaller cooler will allow you to use just the right amount of dry ice instead of maybe not having enough to properly cover your equipment because your cooler is too huge. While I purchased my coolers from Amazon, I noticed they were a couple bucks cheaper at Home Depot, so definitely shop around before just assuming something like Prime is worth it like I did. Now that we've got the closed loop system cleaned and assembled, we're going to pull a vacuum on the recovery tank. Please note that I am only doing this because this is a brand new recovery tank directly from Best Value Vax. While they ship it filled with nitrogen to keep it clean and dry until use, which I have already released, there has never ever been any solvent added to this tank. Using a basic vacuum pump like this on equipment with solvent is a big no-no. That is a quick way to start a fire or even create an explosion. Please only do this step if you are using a brand new tank. It will take about a minute or two to pull a full vac on the recovery tank, but once complete, just set it aside until you are ready for the final recovery step. We are going to keep the flood line that connects the solvent storage tank to the blast column connected, and the valves on the blast column open, but the solvent storage tank will remain closed. Remember, never blast indoors. The butane storage tank here is closed and will remain closed until it is outside and ready to be distilled. This little bit of extra vac in the flood line might not be much, but every little bit does help. Solvents like butane remain a liquid under pressure, but rapidly boil and evaporate off in most open air environments. In fact, the boiling point of butane is about 32 degrees Fahrenheit, the same temperature which water freezes at. Alternatively, the melting point is about negative 210 degrees Fahrenheit. On top of that, it is classified as extremely flammable, so again, take extra care when handling it. Now that we understand when it will convert from a liquid to a gas and back, we can use our equipment as a functional cold trap to distill the butane and remove any mystery oils. We finally got our distillation chamber chilled on dry ice and our system vacked, so it's time to run the distillation process. You'll notice the top injection point is different than previously in this series, but that's just the top to the closed pressurized column. I ran this process several times in making this video series and, in this instance, decided to double check the gauges together. At this point, by my estimation, I have let about 6 to 8 pounds of butane chase from the quote unquote room temperature solvent storage tank to the collection chamber on dry ice. This is plenty for me to get started on extracting, so I will cut it off there. After closing the valve on your solvent storage tank, you can remove your cold trap chamber from the dry ice and prepare to recover your distilled butane into your recovery tank. The recovery tank should be chilled in dry ice prior to recovery. This is where that second cooler comes into play. It's always good to give your connections an extra bit of tightening to ensure no solvent leaks. Just make sure you don't overdo it and strip them. 
I actually have a third cooler here I am using, but you can use one of your first two if you get the timing down right or have an extra pair of hands. This cooler has been filled with 90 degree water. I would recommend using anywhere from 80 to 90 degrees. Any lower and your recovery efficiency will become a problem, but any higher and you're more likely to boil off these mystery oils directly into your recovery tank. Coincidentally, this is also about the same temperature you will use in the actual extraction process. After opening the valves on both the recovery tank and the distillation chamber, you can add the chamber to the warm water and then go enjoy the process of recovery. And by that, I mean grab a drink, make yourself some popcorn, and wait. The recovery process could take anywhere from 30 minutes to several hours. This will ultimately depend on the equipment you are using, the amount of solvent you are recovering, and the temperatures you are working at. Using the extra gauge I purchased and explained in previous videos, I can check the pressure of both my recovery tank and my distillation chamber. While mostly unnecessary, I get curious and would rather be safe than sorry. Another tip I picked up from fellow extractors is to periodically shake your cooler that contains the recovery tank and dry ice. This will help condense the solvent into a liquid quicker and keep the tank cold. You should also know that air is dry ice is kryptonite. Store in airtight coolers and use towels and lids to keep air out. A sight glass on your collection base will allow you to know exactly when recovery is done and when to close the valves. Unfortunately, my system does not yet have one, so I had to guess and basically just weigh it by hand. The sun is setting and darkness approaches, so let's wrap up this video. I'll leave you with a close-up shot of the mystery oil itself. If you are not distilling your solvent, it is very likely substances like this will be showing up in your oil. It's disgusting, unhealthy, and it's far from medical or connoisseur grade. Hopefully this is as eye-opening for you as it was for me. Leave a comment below and let me know about your distillation experiences, and don't forget to subscribe for more and thumbs up the video as well. Check out the last two videos of this playlist, and click on the link in the description below for the entire playlist. Until next time, good luck and grow big.